This is our destination today. It's a couple of lakes in the Medicine Bow Mountains, the Rewa Wilderness. Absolutely spectacular views on this hike. Enjoy yourself as you explore and discover the gems on this hike in the Rewa Wilderness. We're on Highway 14 headed east towards the Medicine Bow Mountains and we'll take a right here, cross over the river and on up the Forest Service Road. While driving in on the Forest Service Road, we passed a couple of lakes. Uh, this is one of the lakes. There was a burn on uh, one side of the lake. As well as passing this lake, we passed a little bit of wildlife, a small family of moose as we drove into the trailhead. After driving down the road a number of miles, uh, we turn into the trailhead parking lot at this location. Welcome to Hidden Gems of Nature. Uh, we're in the parking lot today here in Colorado. We're uh, headed back into the Raywall Wilderness. I'll kind of pan around so you can see what the parking lot looks like. Road's right there behind me as well. Um, this is a three-day trip. We're heading in on a Thursday morning and then uh, back out Saturday night. It is absolutely stunning up here. Join us as we explore and discover these gems in the Raywall Wilderness. This is our first fork on the hike. You can see the trail here behind me that comes in. This is where we fork. You can see my two sons, Jordan and McCallum, as they're um, hiking up the right side of the fork. This year on our backpacking trip, I have my two oldest boys, Jordan and McCallum, joining us, and Jordan's good friend, Fred. Callan loves birding, so he carries a set of binoculars around his neck while we're backpacking. And he stops on a number of occasions whenever he sees a bird or hears a bird that he's not familiar with. This is one of our first breaks in the forest, so we thought we'd stop, take a quick picture of the view we get. We As you can see from the trail, uh, we're hiking through a really dense forest. It's gorgeous up here. It's uh, pine, aspen, fir, spruce. It's gorgeous. Most of the time we're hiking in the shade. Uh, this hike is about a uh, six and a half mile hike in. We have about a 2,600 foot elevation gain. And then we'll be camped at a couple of lakes up high and enjoying a three-day trip, day hiking into some other lakes. We'll take some video of that as well. Enjoy yourself as you hike through this gorgeous forest. We pass a number of these streams along the way. They're beautiful. Cross a few of them like this one. This whole section of the trail is seep. You can see this part of the trail. We just went through some more. And it's also a fork in the trail. So right here where all these seeps come through, we'll come to this fork. We're gonna stay left. We've come to this open area. There's not very many meadows on this hike because the forests have encroached on them pretty significantly, but we can get a few views from here. Um, really pretty back in here. And every time there's a break in the forest, we stop and enjoy the flowers and the meadows and the views.
we have to cross these streams a number of times as we're hiking in. Fortunately, there's enough uh, logs and rocks that we're able to cross without having to take our shoes off, although there will be one stream that we do have to take our shoes off and wade through. Fred took a number of pictures of flowers as we were hiking and thought I'd share a few of them with you. Come to another fork and we'll take the fork to the left. This will be the final fork on the trail trails there and this will take us up to the lakes that we're camping at. We're about six miles in on the trail now. You can see the view down below. It's really spectacular. We don't get a lot of views because the forest is pretty dense up here. That's kind of nice. We're hiking in shade most of the time uh, but absolutely beautiful views uh, where we have the opportunity. Enjoy that view. We'll be to our lakes in probably uh, three quarters to half a mile. There's several large streams in this meadow. This is the only stream we actually had to wade through on the entire hike. This meadow has a number of uh, beautiful streams and you can see this is upstream from where we crossed right here. It's beautiful here. The forest opens up at this point and this whole valley is largely a meadow. We're at an elevation of just under 11,000 feet at this point and our destination is just over 11,000 feet. So we get a chance to walk through this beautiful meadow and see a few of the streams and cascades coming down into this valley. This is one of two large cascades flowing down into the meadow. Both of the cascades are fed by lakes that are just sitting up on benches at the base of the peaks. You can kind of see these peaks and these ridge lines that go around where we'll be uh, camping and hiking the next day or two. So this is the last time we'll cross this large stream before we get up to the lake. And of course, there's snowpack up here, and you can see the water, the stream actually flowing right through the snowpack. Kind of a cool little shot. Uh, now we got to figure out how to cross the stream. These are a couple of views as we're hiking the last two or three hundred yards up that final grade up to the lake that we'll be camped at. This is day two of our uh, backpacking trip in the Raywall Wilderness. This is our camp. I'll kind of pan around a little bit. You can see it's very small camp. Uh, there's not much in the way of campgrounds around these two lakes that we're in. It's very rocky um, and hilly, and there's not, not very many places to camp. We're actually up above 11,000 feet, so we can't have fires either. You can hear that chirping in the background. Uh, we have some marmots around camp. I think they're waiting for us to leave camp and see what they can do with our camp while we're gone. But again, this is just a small camp. Um, not a lot of places to camp around here, but a beautiful lake, gorgeous views. Um, I'll show you a few of the views from our campsite. A couple of pictures, just absolutely spectacular as you look back into the meadow uh, just below us and just below the, sp the natural spillway on this lake. About 15 yards behind our camp, this is the view that we have of that meadow that we hiked up yesterday. We headed down to the lake to do a little bit of fishing and standing on a little rise behind Fred was a small herd of Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep. We watched them for a little bit as they came up towards us and then circled around another stand of rocks and over to another little rise. It's kind of nice to see all the wildlife on this trip. And then eventually they came right back down to the lake next to where we were fishing. 
In fact, Fred was catching a lot of fish in this area, and here's one of the fish he caught. McCallan and I decided to cross country over to another lake about a mile away from our camp. So we'll head up the mountain opposite our camp and crest out on a small bench and then head down that bench to an adjacent lake. We've just come up out of the basin that you can see below me. You can see the bigger of the two lakes that we're camped on. You can actually see some white patches down on the lake. Most of that's actually ice, believe it or not. Uh, it's what, July 22nd, still ice down there on the lake. It's a pretty view, cold water. We've just come down this boulder field. We crested out just this side of that knoll. And now we're just cross country and across the boulder field and the snowpack. A lot of snowpack up here still. We're going to head right through that V and down into the lake. It's not very far away. I just saw it a few minutes ago. <laughs> Came around the corner and we're just in this little slot right before the lake. You can see the lake off in the distance. It's only probably 300 yards away. After crossing the boulder field, we came to this little inlet. This whole inlet is uh, snow melt fed. You can hear the water flowing underneath the boulders as we were hiking across them. And we came to the inlet, and of course the water is just crystal clear. It's gorgeous. McCallan threw in his line a couple of times and pulled out a couple of fish. Absolutely gorgeous cutthroat trout up here. Callan and I just came from. The lake is gorgeous. It's crystal clear. You saw some of the pictures earlier. We stayed there for an hour or so and then headed back to our camp. As I pan back across, you can see the valley and meadow that we hiked in yesterday and the cascades coming down on either side of the small valley. And this is the lake that we're camped at. And then you can see the upper lake right next to it. I think the elevation gain between the two lakes is all of four feet. And you can still see the icebergs on the upper lake. Uh, I think we're going to head up to the upper lake tomorrow and spend some time there tomorrow. This is sunrise on day three and a shot of the mountain opposite sunrise. Really spectacular up here. It's day three. Uh, we're on our way out of the camp. We actually uh, went around the lake, went up to the upper lake. I get some great video of the upper lake, some great hidden gems along that hike. Came across some more wildlife. Great day, and then we're uh, gonna head down and off the mountain before the storms roll in. Join us as we explore and discover the gems on this third day of our backpacking trip. This is the upper lake. It's probably twice the size of the lower lake. It sits right at the bottom of the peaks, as you can see. So it's all snowpack fed with just cascades rolling into it. Because of all the snowpack, there's a lot of icebergs floating around on the lake, and I'll take some pictures of the icebergs so you can see what they look like as well. The water in this lake is also much clearer than the lake that we're camped on. Uh, Jordan and I headed to the far side of the lake, hiked across a couple of the snowpacks. You can see Jordan crossing this one right now. While we were walking through the snowpack, McCallan was being entertained by a weasel that he'd come across. This is kind of a cute little weasel as you're looking at him. But we took a little video of him, and he's trying to get into McCallan's pack. And it looks like, from the video, that I've got the thing on high speed. But this is normal speed. It's just how fast this weasel was moving. It was amazing. And to top things off, we saw this moose on the way out, along with its calf. This trip was quite a trip for wildlife. We saw quite a bit on this trip, not to mention all the gorgeous beauty around us the entire hike. Uh, absolutely incredible trip. Enjoy yourselves as you explore and discover the hidden gems on this hike in the Raywall Wilderness.